Hello you hyena headed CRT television fuckers, Jim Sterling here and this is Here They Lie, the exciting <laughs> PlayStation VR horror game debut from a developer. Uh, doesn't matter. It's a first person horror game, not on Steam, but on PlayStation VR. You can expect to see more of them in future because, well, it's a really easy gig. Horror games, even bad horror games, can be a bit scary in VR because you're there. You feel like you're there in the place, actually being chased by monsters. No matter how silly or stupid the monsters are, you feel like you're there. Oh, this was me having picked up a photograph, uh, one of the few things in the game that has some colour to it, and I was just like using the motion tracking to look around the back. I thought it might have been spooky if there was something at the back that you, you know, couldn't see, and you'd be rewarded with some sort of secret if you actually craned your head around and looked, but, but no, no, it's just a mirror image of the photograph on the other side, it's, it's not that exciting. I was trying to find some excitement in the game, because it's not very exciting. A lot of reviews have been praising it, but if it didn't have the VR thing going for it, it would be just another also-ran horror game. Very little happens in it. Like, very little happens in it. It's mostly walking around. Not quite what you'd call a walking simulator, because there is sometimes stuff to do. There's some stealth, if you can call it stealth. Um, very, very low-level, bare-bones, basic stealth. Sometimes there are monsters, and you can just breeze past them when their backs are turned. <laughs> That's about it. You, you can't even crouch. You don't have to worry about sound or anything, as far as I can tell. Just breeze past them. There's a monster now. I mean, kind of. They make noises like monsters, but when you get up close to them, they just look like people without clothes. And, and, like, wearing skulls around their heads. And I guess they're spooky. I don't know. People seem spooked by it. But again, I think that's because it's a horror game in VR. Which gets a natural edge. Like that, what's it, Alice Wants to Play or whatever it was called? We covered it before. Uh, before VR came out on, on uh, a Jim Pressions video. And it was rubbish. It was rubbish. But it makes a good VR title. Because it's a horror game and they just gain a little extra from the hardware. But looking at it, when you look at it without the headset on, it just, I mean, it's so dull. It's, it's dull looking as well, like, like visually very lifeless. Uh, the colors are muted, gray, pallid, kind of this sickly gray, greeny thing going on. And while limited colour schemes can be artistically quite bold, strong, what, what have you, here, because there's no real definition or contrast or anything, it's just a, a mess. It's just this pale, dismal, everything's bleeding into each other. It, it, it's, it doesn't make a statement at all. It's just dreary. Drab. Drab's the, the name for it, really. Yeah. Game Informer liked it, though. Then again, I don't think Game Informer felt intense, intense levels of uncomfortable sickness after 10 minutes of playing it. As I did, uh, this game is one of the most negative reviews uh, I've written in a while, the one I wrote for this one, because I felt so tremendously unwell playing it. And I didn't have to play it for very long um, to feel that way. I, in fact, I could only play it in sessions of about 10, 15 minutes at a time. The game between levels tells you to take a break, and there's a reason for that. That was a jump scare. It did get me a little bit, because again, in VR, that stuff's kind of effective. You know, you feel like you're there. Anyway, at some point, one of these monsters who you've been trained to be afraid of for ages is kind of friendly a bit. So you follow him around in a tunnel. It took me a while to work that out, because the game doesn't communicate to you that this one won't try and kill you. But there you go. So I followed it through this tunnel, it goes in a mattress, goes well, in a room with a mattress with blood on it. Red, one of the few colours that uh, show up among all the miserable looking grey shit. God, this game made me feel ill. Really ill. I'm trying to work out what exactly did it, like why this made me sick where Riggs didn't. Or indeed where Riggs made Game Informer's reviewer sick, where apparently this didn't, although it could have been two different people, I don't know. I don't really bother 
seeing who writes what. But either way, again, it, it talks to that disconnect that can be had from reviewer to reviewer, from player to player. As some people feel sick by certain games, some people don't. There seems to be no objective like this game definitely knocks you sick. Um, I guess with the exception of EVE, I, I think it was EVE Valkyrie and Drive Club VR, seem to consistently make people feel unwell. But I'm sure you can find people who have played those games no problem either. Uh, again, it talks to that unique exclusion I talked about in the Rigs video, where you just don't know which games are going to make you ill and which games aren't. It's, it's, you, there's just no telling till you put the headset on and play it, which is a big risk for me. It's like, again, like I said in the Rigs video, it's why I'm leery about buying any PlayStation VR games. Because what's the point if it's good? Like, this is where a returns policy is really needed. Like, PlayStation Store, so they're selling this stuff digitally, you know. There needs to be a return policy for this shit, because if it makes you so unwell you can't play it, you should be able to just return that no fuss, no... No, no argument from Sony. But, you know, that, that kind of stuff is still somewhat inadequate on consoles. Steam, of course, has the, the two-hour refund thing, and consoles have always needed that, especially if they want digital distribution to be taken seriously. They need to start taking digital customers seriously and customer satisfaction, customer care. So they've always needed the refund thing, but now more than ever, while Sony's trying to push VR, they should have, like, play this within a certain amount of time. If it makes you want to fucking upchuck, then here's your money back, mate. No questions asked. But that's not something they have in place. So anyway, enjoying this footage I captured, complete with the fisheye look that uh, apparently happens when you capture things using a PS Share on a PS4 with VR. This queasy looking VR look, uh, VR, this uh, queasy looking fisheye look to everything. So this is where the game threatened to be interesting until it became just you looking at stuff and barely getting to interact. But basically you go to this weird, I guess maybe underground, but I'm not sure. But either way, sleazy looking town, village, place. Um, looks like a kind of undercity, almost, with these half-naked people wearing animal heads that do things like this to each other, just sort of beating each other up. This is dragging him in there, probably to do all sorts of nasty things. There's a lot of people, like, you just wander around looking at these people living in squalor, pretending to have sex, because, of course, never dare take their clothes off, pretending to have sex, uh, at one point, there's a guy in a hyena head fucking a CRT television, which is always exciting, I guess. These ones here with the vaguely gold mask, again, a little splash of colour there. Uh, they're enemies, I, I guess. If you ever get killed in the game, and I've got a little footage later, if you ever get quote-unquote killed, uh, you don't die so much as just respawn nearby after a little time wasty cutscene thing. No, that's something that happened. Anyway, let's talk again about how sick the game made me fucking feel. Seriously, like the, one of the least pleasant experiences I've had this year with any game, VR or not. Just nasty. And again, like I said, if, it, if I felt like I was missing something by not playing it, and rest assured, the idea that I'll never play this again makes me very, very happy. Um... Maybe there'd be more merit to it, and I'd feel a bit bad about having to tear into it so much. But, again, without the VR, it's just it's just another horror game. A bit weird. You know, it's got some interesting visuals. You know, here's a guy with a warthog, warthog head, or a... Yeah, it's like some sort of boar, I think. Look, he's doing a little thrusty pretend make a fuck. So that's entertaining for everyone. Now we're going to look in this window and see other people get into more interesting situations than we, the player, are in. It's enough of that. This is a whole sort of red light district area, except, you know, 
without all the cool neon coloured lights that you get in Red Light Districts, which would have made the game a bit more visually appealing. Like if these signs in the background were all different colours, garishly contrasted against the grey, that would be good. That would be artistically strong. But anyway, we rescue one of these guys from their cage and is all happy, and then he realises he's happier inside because of the scary outside world. Really makes you think, doesn't it? No, it doesn't really, does it? Oh, well. It's two, uh, two warthog fellas there. It looks like they're, like, comparing penises, maybe. But it's not really explicit. It doesn't really make it too clear. Batteries for your torch, because, of course, it's a horror game, so you've got to have flashlight batteries that last less than a fraction of a real battery flashlight. I meant to say flashlight battery there instead of battery flashlight. So... I fucked up there. That's on me. That's on me. That one. I'll take that one. Liquor's wines. Oh. God. Even looking back, like, this isn't enough to make me sick, but it's triggering horrible, like, tummy memories. Don't like it. Blah. 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 So here's where I got curious about what happens when you die. Go over there in a second and bother those warthog fellas a bit until they lose their temper. And then you get to see what happens when you die. It's not that interesting, really. But it's something. It's an event. It's an occurrence. Ring goes a bit red. A bit yellowy red. And then you get battered. And the game's quite inconsiderate about what is held in front of your eyes. There are moments where you'll be, like, grabbed by the shoulders or whatever, and the person who's grabbing you, their arm, will just sort of clip into your eyeball, and it's really harsh on the eyes. There's one part where your maybe your ghost or spirit or whatever leaves your body and floats up to some other location. And it's clipping through walls, it's going through body parts of NPCs as they walk past, and it's so jarring and, like, it just hurts the eyes to have shit like that just clipping in front of you. Horrific. Horrible. Anyway, this is the last little bit that I captured. The hyena-headed lady, hyena-headed bloke. Want me to have a bit of fun. They give me a breeze block. This is, uh, up until this point, was all me controlling it, looking down and everything. So one good thing, I guess, is it makes you feel like you're in a cutscene a bit sometimes in PlayStation VR, the way you can look down and get a bit of extra freedom of eyesight, I guess, that you don't get in other first-person games, but that's about it. Hyena lady wants to have a go of it, but the hyena man isn't saying no. I'm so angry his head sort of went through her shoulder a bit. Anyway, that's that. That's that's here they lie. How exciting. <laughs>